Today we're going to begin looking at chapter 6. And chapter 6 involves several different techniques of understanding and working with integrals. Today we're going to be discussing two concepts that are very important to sort of both the fundamentals of integration as well as going beyond integration. We're going to discuss slope fields today and we're going to discuss the concepts around Euler's method. A good way to approach these problems is that in some ways, we'll see some differences here that make this not quite exact, but in some ways these represent numerical and graphical ways of integrating. Now we already have some numerical ways of doing integration and we understand graphically what integration gives us in terms of the area under a given curve, but I want to take and, and look at slope fields in Euler's method today as, as ways of approaching this problem, thinking about it from a, a different perspective. Um, and to understand that perspective, the first thing we have to introduce is, is a new kind of equation. I want to talk to you today about the concept of, of a differential equation. And to help you understand what a differential equation is and, and what it tells us, I want us to just review some information we already know about regular equations. If, for example, we think about the equation x squared plus 4 is equal to 13, what is this really doing? What is this, what is this object? Okay. This object basically defines a condition for the true values. So what this equation does is it, it gives us a rule or condition that, that x must satisfy in order to be the x that we're actually looking for. And in your algebra class you know how to go through and, and solve a problem like this. The kind of equations we're going to be looking at today are differential equations. And a differential equation looks somewhat different We'll look at very simple differential equations today, but this might be an example of a differential equation. Very simple, straightforward one. Okay, And so what are we looking for here? We're no longer looking for x. x remains a variable here. What this does is this defines a condition, not for the true values of x, but this defines a condition on the true functions y. What this is, is this is a rule that tells us how to structure our function y in such a way that it is true or that it meets the condition that we have proposed here. So let's, let's think about what this, what this looks like and, and what this is talking about dy dx, one of the best ways to understand dy dx, of course, is as the um, instantaneous rate of change of the function. And so if we want to think about it, what, what this, another way of looking at this is it's telling us what the slope is. It's telling us that we need a function. Okay, y is the function. We'll see that the here is maybe not the best choice of words here. Y is the function that has a slope of x. Okay. So this is what we call a differential equation. It's an equation that contains derivatives. We're not solving for a numerical value here. Rather, we're solving for a function that makes this equation true. So take a moment, can you figure out what the correct answer here is? What would be the solution here? What y value, or sorry, what, what function y can we choose that has a slope of x? What we're really saying here is that we know the derivative. The derivative of our function is x. So can we work backwards and determine what the original function must have been? This is a, this is a great question. 
And this is really the one of the fundamental questions from calculus. So let's think about this. If dy dx is equal to x, then y must be what? What do we have to do here? And if you think about it, this is simply an antiderivative question. Right? We're starting with the derivative and we're asking, what did this come from? So the answer here could be that y is equal to 1 half x squared. The answer is also possibly y equals 1 half x squared plus 3. If you think about it, both of these functions have exactly the same derivative. If we take the derivative of either one of these expressions, we will simply get x. So when we solve a differential equation, we often write sort of the most general solution possible. So the best way to express the answer to this problem is to say that the solution is y equals 1 half x squared plus c, where c here is simply a constant. As long as we only add a constant on, when we take the derivative of an expression, that part vanishes. Okay, that, that part simply vanishes. If you would like to think about this in, in, in a graphical sense, if you'd like to understand what we mean here, what we're saying is that if we look at a series of functions, we'll just do a quick sketch here. If we look at a series of functions, there's a whole series of functions, all of these parabolas, that have identical derivatives everywhere. And the only difference between these derivatives, and of course it's not quite right, but the only difference between these derivatives is the fact that they have different y-intercepts, right? They, only, they all are vertically shifted. And that's simply what happens when you add in a constant. So adding or subtracting a constant in here does not affect the slopes at all. It simply affects the position of the graph. But that's information we lose when we take the derivative. Sometimes we're interested in a specific parabola, or sometimes we're interested in a specific solution. So let's take a look at, at what we would call an initial value problem. An initial value problem, we're given a differential equation, just like the equation we looked at before. We're given a differential equation, but we're also given another piece of information we're generally given a point on the solution. And this is what turns this into an initial value problem. We actually are given a, a value for this function initially. So let's, let's take a look at this. Um, let's suppose we have the differential equation dy dx is equal to sine of x and x is pi when y is 8. So this would be an example of an initial value problem. We're given a, a point on the curve, this pi comma 8 point, as well as the, the function that we know the derivative of. So how do we think about this? Maybe you want to take a moment and see if you can solve this problem on your own. What we need is the antiderivative of sine of x. What do we have to take the derivative of in order to get sine? And if you think about that carefully, the correct answer is we must have y equals minus cosine of x because the derivative of cosine is minus sine. Those two negative signs cancel out and we end up with the correct slope. We end up with the correct derivative here. But we also then can add on a plus c. We can add on some constant here, and the value of this constant will be determined by the points that this function must travel through. And since we know one of those points, we can determine what c must be in this particular problem. We know that y is 8 when x is pi, so we can simply have this particular expression here. 8 must equal minus cosine of pi plus c. But everybody here knows what the cosine of pi is. Pi is the same as 180 degrees. So here we have minus and minus 1 plus c must equal 8. Or, I want to simplify that a little further, 
8 equals 1 plus c and therefore c is equal to 7 and the function that solves that initial value problem is the function y equals the co minus the cosine of x plus 7. So this is a basic introduction to initial value problems and differential equations. At the moment we're going to solve differential equations by inspection. And inspection simply means we're going to look at it and we're going to see the answer because we're also good with our derivatives. We can see antiderivatives of expressions and come up with, with the possible solution to differential equation um, in that way.